This is a short video to help you get started with Lab 1. This is the magic ball exercise. Uh, in addition to this uh, document, you will also find a template uh, that I have uploaded onto uh, your Canvas course. And you can use that code to help you get going. And I will go over how this program is going to finally look like and how to use the template. So here is the specification. It says write a modular program in a class called magic ball that asks the user to enter a question and gives a crystal ball like answer. So uh, if the user enters, you know, is this my lucky day, for example, and then the magic ball is going to give some weird answer. Now, some of the specifications are given here, but I'd rather run the program to show you what it actually is supposed to look in the final um, uh, display. So here, this is what my game is going to look like. You see this, it says, please enter your question or quit to exit. And I'm going to say, am I going to uh, get an A? And then it says, most likely. It is repeating. And so I answer the second question. And then I'm going to say, is it going to rain today? And then it says, yes, definitely. So different answers. Random answers are being provided to any question that the user, user doesn't have, user can just give any question and it will still, still say, as I see it, yes. Now, because this is repeating, this is a condition control loop which stops when I say quit. I should be able to say quit or I should be able to say quit or I should be able to say quit. Everything should work and then the program exits. You can add any other feature that you like, buy or thank you for playing the game. That's entirely up to you. But here, that is given to you. So what I'm providing to you is the main class. This is completely done for you. You do not need to write the main program. What you do need to write is you need to write the methods that are in this file, which is the magic uh, ball helper file. So what is being given to you? You are being given an answers file and it's going up to 18. You can change this file. You can create your own file with different sizes. You need to, however, test your program with file with an empty file. You need to test your program with a uh, file that has maybe three or four entries and with a file that has 20 entries and with a file that has greater than 20 entries. All of these things will be checked when the grader runs your program for grading. So please make sure that this uh, tests have already been done and it is ready to go. So what does the main program look like? Here, I'm creating a, con a constant, uh, which is called size. This is the maximum. This is the size of the array, because as you know, with arrays, we need to give a size. Uh, this does not mean that there's actually going to be 20 arrays, uh, 20 entries inside because uh, the file can have three or four or none or greater than 20, but this is the maximum we can hold. And then the, what the main program does is it creates an empty database called answers. Note that the name of the file is answers. And I've deliberately kept this answers just so there's a correlation. And I'm creating an array, empty array database of size 20. And I'm calling magic ball helper dot. As you know from CSE 15, this means that this method called read answers is an actually in a separate file. And it and then you can see from here that it actually returns the count. So this method read answers is supposed to open the file and read the file, copy the contents into this database, this empty database, keep a count of how many they were actually inside the file and return that number. This is important. We cannot work on the assumption that there's going to be 20 entries every time. And if we did not have 20 entries, then the random number can select any number between 0 and 19. And if it selects 18 and the answer 18 answer is not there, then it's not a good game to play because nothing is going to get output. So we need to write a user-friendly uh, game and therefore we keep the actual count and then we call magic ball magic ball helper dot play game 
Note here that I pass the answers, the empty database into read answers. And because of the array sem reference semantics, when we exit from here, this database has gotten filled inside the method and it's good to go. And now I can pass it into the play game as a filled database. And the count that I got from Magic Helper is also getting passed in here. So let's look at what you've got in your template. You've got a lot of information in your template here, and I'd encourage you to go over this. You've got the read the three methods here, read answers method, then there is a play game method, and there's an additional helper method called post reply. So what do they do? The read answers method, there's a lot of comments here to help you. Create a variable called count, initialize it to zero, use the try cat statement, and some code has already been given to you. And here the play game method, it uses a while loop to um, uh, repeatedly prompt the user for the question, and then it indexes into the array. How does it do it? It randomly indexes into the array by using a helper method called post reply. What this does is this is the method that actually creates the random object. And, and then it, as you know, from all of the review we've been doing with random and stuff, that you need to index into um, uh, and provide a bound for the random number. So we can use count uh, as a parameter uh, to create that bound between zero to count minus one, and then we print the array index at that. So, so now hopefully you've got an overview of what your final product should look like when you play the game. And also you have a template to, to help you um, uh, fill in, right? So, all right.